Hi, everybody. Dan Oldman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Thursday, September the 10th, race number eight at Emerald Downs. Let's throw up the field for the signature race of the Emerald Downs meeting. Heck, it's the signature race in the entire Pacific Northwest. It's the grade three $100,000 Long Acres Mile Handicap. You can download free formulator pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Download them, handicap along with us. Mike, what a fascinating entrant is the morning line favorite. The number four, another twist of fate, hasn't been seen since the Preakness. The 2019 Preakness where he finished 10th against War of Will. Long layoff, short price. He is going to be a short price in here. He's also going to be um, pretty tough for this field to beat if he's ready off the long break. I don't know how short a price um, I'd want to take on him, but he's a pretty talented horse. Whenever the number seven Papa's Golden Boy is entered, you know there's going to be a fast pace. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. Papa's Golden Boy has shown some wicked sprint speed, like quarter horse sprint speed. He's making the lead in here, but I don't think you can slow him down. I agree with that red bar scenario. This pace should be hot. It should be. It not only is does he, you know, almost have to be on the lead, but um, and he is a fast horse. But there's other speed in the race, so if he is going to clear off on this, because he's going to have to go fast to get there. Washington bred coming into this race in really good forms. The number one Elliott Bay. Love the versatility is shown in his last two races. In his seasonal debut, he goes gate to wire at five and a half. Let's watch the Mount Rainier last time out where we see Papa's Golden Boy on a big lead, but he is getting tired. And Elliott Bay shows no quit, Mike, in getting up in the shadow of the wire. He was very game uh, to win this. He got bumped between horses at the start. Um, Papa's golden boy just ran off on a fast pace. And this horse showed no quit in the stretch. And a good finish here to close him down right at the wire. Now, this horse did win around two turns, a stakes race as a two-year-old. Since then, it seems he's a little bit better around one turn. Are you worried about the mile? Because this race should set up nicely from a pace standpoint. I think I think he'll get a good trip in the race. I am a little worried about the distance because he does look like a better sprinter to me. Coming down from Hastings Park is the number two five-star general. This horse won the British Columbia Derby last year as a three-year-old. He's run twice this year. Both good efforts. Let's watch his most recent performance, the Lieutenant Governor's Handicap. Three-turn mile in a 16th. He's in between horses here. I think he's beaten, but he is going to have to steady just a little bit in between horses. He had to move early. I don't think he loved this wet track. I think he's better on fast going. My one concern is not distance. It's not surface. It's pace. He likes to be close to the pace. And they're probably going to be going a lot faster in here than they have been in these last few. I'm worried about um, the trip he can pull um, as you are. Um, I do think he's pretty good, though. And I think stretching out actually helps this horse as it may not, you know, whereas it may not help some of the other horses in here. I think the added distance works for him. I think he's run well in both of his races, Dan. Um, he didn't have like a huge excuse last time, but he did a lot of work in that race um, up with the pace for a long way, contesting it all through the turn. He never stopped trying late. Stretch out sprinter stepping up in class is up next. Let's watch the number three, the press's most recent victory. Now this is going six furlongs. It's against $25,000 claimers. The press comes off the pace to win with a 72 buyer speed figure. These are tougher horses. It's a different distance situation. He's probably just going to hang back, hope this pace collapses and try to get a strong piece of the pie. Yeah, the, the trip or, and the pace in front of him shouldn't be a real excuse for him in here. I just didn't really think he was good enough to beat this field. Another twist of fate won the El Camino Real Derby over Synthetic, but he backed that race up with strong graded stakes performances, runner-up efforts in both the Sunland Derby and Lexington on dirt, and in the Preakness. He was hustled out of there. He pushed a very fast pace. He was actually in contention till about the eighth pole before understandably tiring. That was not a bad race at all. This long layoff is a bit worrisome. I kind of trust Blaine Wright that he knows this horse is ready to go for the Long Acres Mile. I kind of agree with you. I think he will be ready to run here. You'll notice um, through the month of August, four straight, six furlong works. I don't think fitness is really going to be an issue for this horse. Um, and we'll just see if he comes back and runs one of his good races. Dan, I think if he runs his best race, he wins. I think he's the reason's a little bit of an interesting horse. My concern is pace. He likes to be up close. He had a very good year at Hastings last year, winning the lieutenant governors around three turns. And something tells me, 
His most recent race was just a prep. They've been eyeballing this race all along, in my opinion. They sprinted him last time out. It was a two-turn sprint at Hastings. He ran okay. I think he could take a forward move here. Yeah, I think he'll improve, too. Um, he didn't you know, run that great last time. I mean, an easy lead in there. Five-star general just tracked him and easily beat him that day. But he was off the layoff. He probably wants a little more distance. And he does have races from last year um, that would give him a, a look in this race. Dan, we'll see what kind of trip he can pull because he wants to be on the lead, it looks like. Six Hollywood heats coming into this race in good form. Let's watch his most recent effort on August the 13th. This is an allowance win going six furlongs. Hollywood heats going to come from off the pace and he's going to win in solid fashion. That being said, the buyer speed figure did come back a little bit light. And this just seems like a tough spot to make a two turn debut. Yeah, they're asking a lot of this horse. Um, you know, he's going to sit this thing out here and try and make one run. We'll see how big a step um, forward he can take because he needs to take a big one. Blinkers have just turned around Papa's golden boy's attitude. In his last three starts with Blinkers, he's shown wicked early speed. But that last race, the Mount Rainier, he went real fast early. He had a clear lead at the eighth pole and he couldn't last going six and a half. Going a mile it's worrisome, uh, but he's going to be on the lead. And I think they're just going to let him roll. Yeah, I do too. You'd like to think that, you know, stretching out a little bit in distance, maybe he wouldn't have to go that fast to make the early lead. But Dan, there's plenty of other pace in this race. I just don't see how he gets the trip that he really needs to beat this field. Take charge deputy, the number eight, kind of a price horse that I'm a little bit interested in, Mike. He likes to come from off the pace. This is his third start of the form cycle. He was third last time out in the Mount Rainier, and I guess you could argue that it was a bit disappointing considering the pace setup that he didn't get past that tiring pace setter late, but he's only run twice off the layoff, and now he's stretching out to a mile, and he's always run well at a mile. I think he's got a big puncher's chance from the back of the pack. This is a good distance for him. I, you know, I found it hard to convince myself that he was as good as some of the other, um, you know, more major contenders in the race, but it'll be a better price than them. So if you like him, you should, you should probably take a shot with him because he will get the right trip in this race, it looks like. The nine Maka Lane just kind of was in a darned if you do, darned if you don't scenario in the Mount Rainier. He was the one chasing the speed horse early through those fast fractions, and he tired at the end. The issue is stretching out with his big victory, a two-turn stakes win in gate-to-wire fashion last year as a three-year-old. He's going to be in a similar situation here, just on a hard chase at a distance that might be tough for him if the pace is fast. Yeah, he's one of the horses who just feels like the way this race is going to be run um, isn't going to suit his running style. That's a real problem for this horse, but he's run some good races. Let's watch Lawan, who's been in really good form in his last three races at Emerald. He's in for a $30,000 tag in this optional claiming race, and he's just going to fall short, finishing second by a head. He's the gray horse in the yellow blinkers. This race came on the heels of two pace-pressing wins at six furlongs. Now he's going to have to stretch out. The distance is within his scope, but the issue is, as with several other horses in this race, he's a speed horse at a race full of speed. Right. He'll get the distance. Um, he does have to improve to beat this field. This is a little bit on the cheap side for horses like this, and his running style doesn't really fit this race. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Thursday race of the day, the grade three long acres mile. We see it the same way. We like five star general. I think he's a very consistent horse. It's all about whether he can pull a trip and whether he can be as effective sitting from off the pace as he is when he's right on it. Because for the first time in his career, Mike, he might have to win from like four or five out of it. Yeah, he's going to have to make up some ground in the stretch, it seems like, in this race. We'll see if he can do it. I, I like his distance races, Dan, and I like him stretching out for this race. Um, we'll see. Um, if nothing else, he's catching the favorite, another twist of fate at the right time here off the layup. Maybe he can pull off a little bit of an upset. That horse is certainly the one to beat. If he comes back firing with his best race, they're all going to have to have him nailed on tight. But we'll try to pull off a slight upset with the two five-star general over the four. Another twist of fate in the grade three long acres mile. It is your Thursday race of the day. Approximate post time for the mile is 830 Pacific. Good luck.